Good morning. Welcome to our worship service today. I really don't have very many announcements other than the fact that the newsletter is finished. If you can get a hard copy of that, they're over here. If you can pick yours up, send us some postage. That would be great. Also, if you would uh, like to receive the email blast and the newsletter online, please share with us your email address and we'll be happy to send that to you. Tonight at 7 o'clock, so if you would like to join us, we're studying the book of James. Feel free to join us at 7 tonight. Are there any prayer requests that are not on the prayer list? Yes. Bob Smith. Bob Smith. Did he have a surgery? No, he's not feeling very good. He got that crud and he's got me. He's not good. Kathy had it too, but she's feeling better. She's feeling better, okay. So he was supposed, I thought he was supposed to have a surgery. Yeah, he was supposed to have surgery His name is Thomas Soper. S O P E R. Okay, Thomas Soper. Others? Alrighty. Let's also keep those who are in the Gulf in our prayers. It looked like that storm was looking pretty nasty heading that way this morning. So, all those people down there with that category. I don't even remember her name this time. Do you remember her name? Ida. 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 Thank you. Yeah, Ida. It's not Idaho, but it's it's Ida Hick down there. It looked pretty bad. So keep them in your prayers. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it as we worship the Lord with our prayer today.
walk blamelessly and do what is right. Let us confess all that keeps us from dwelling with God as we unite our voices in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not been faithful children. We have not lived by your law. We have remained silent in the face of evil. We have not refrained from deceit. We have not followed in the way of peace. And we have not honored all that is true and good. We have been foolish and immature people who resist the holy wisdom you graciously offer. Forgive us our sin, O God, and lead us to sincere repentance. And all God's people say, Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen.
join me in the prayer for illumination. Great God of steadfast love, we study your words and delight in your ways. Illumine our understanding by your Holy Spirit, that we may reverence your name, grow in your wisdom, and discern between good and evil. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today is Psalms 34, <coughs> verses 9 through 14. Responsibly. Have reverence for the Lord, all his people. Those who obey him have all they need. Come, my young friends, and listen to me, and I will teach you to have reverence for the Lord. Then keep from speaking evil and from telling lies. Come out together. Turn away from evil and do good. Strive for peace with all your heart. And our next hymn is Blessed Assurance, Jesus Mind, number 514. Because the days are evil. 
So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Well, this is our last sermon in Ephesians. And I know that there is one more chapter. There is actually six chapters in the book of Ephesians. I have read them all. But chapter six talks about the armor of God. And I would imagine most of you probably have heard one or 50 sermons on the armor of God. So we're going to end our series right here in chapter 5. But I want you to know that I invite you at any time to go ahead and pick up your Bibles and read chapter 6. It's okay. Today we're wrapping up this thing about what it means to no longer be strangers as Christian believers. The Spirit leads us to live in the moment. And you know, that's hard for us as Presbyterians. We don't like to live in the moment as all as Presbyterians, right? We want everything to be decent and in order. We want to know what's going to happen next. That's why we have bulletins and programs. That's why we have meetings and sessions and deacons and all these different things to know where we're going and what we're going to do. Being a Presbyterian does not lend itself to living in the moment. And I have to admit, all my life, I have not been very good at living in the moment. When I was a kid, I couldn't wait to do the next thing. Sports seasons were real important in my life, and I lived by the seasons. There was football season, and then there was wrestling season when I was in junior high, and that rolled into baseball. And when I got into high school, there were baseball workouts in the winter because that wrestling stuff wasn't up for me. I was lousy. But then, in the summertime, there was weight training to do for football. All the time, I was busy looking ahead. I couldn't wait to get my driver's license. I couldn't wait to graduate high school. I couldn't wait to get to college. I couldn't wait to graduate from college. Then there was planning a wedding, and then there was student teaching, which both happened at the same time. There was getting the first job and all that important stuff to look forward to. And then as life moved along, oh my gosh, kids came along. And then we were also defined by seasons because, well, I was coaching. So I promised myself as soon as football season ended, I would do this. And it never happened. And as soon as baseball season ended, I would do this and plant the garden and do all these other different things. But it never happened. We also had the carrot dangling that when the kids got much older, we could go here and we could go there. And my teaching career was the same way. When I finished my master's degree and when I did this and when I did that. And finally, 30 years hit me and I was already done. You see, I was always looking forward to the next thing. I was never satisfied with anything that was going on in the present. It was just something to deal with, and then I could get to the really good part of living. However, along the way, I did not appreciate the wonderful things that were happening. I didn't appreciate playing with my kids, teaching them skills in sports, taking them to museums and zoos and, and listening to their worlds. I had a great group of buddies that I taught with in the 90s and the early 2000s. We had so much fun together, but we were so busy living, we forgot to enjoy it. Even when I was coaching and we were winning league and state championships, I didn't enjoy it because I was always wondering, what was the next year going to be like because we're graduating all these kids? I never knew how to live in the moment. But the writer of Ephesians wants us to cherish the moment. We find these words. Be careful then how you live. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of the time. Because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. 
So the question is, how do we look at today as the gift, the present, and wait on the next and the next day to be just as wonderful? Eugene Peterson put it this way, the primary way in which we participate in who God is, in all the particularities of our actual living, deeply, personally, and inextricably in relationship, is the way of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit can only be revealed to us when we allow it to speak. And I know that sounds strange, but it's true. We have to be willing to listen. And often, the speaking of the Spirit's voice comes from the collective church. That's you, the collective church. How many times when we were raising our kids and we were struggling with something that was hard, like potty training or emotional outbursts, did some little old lady from the back of the church, in this church they sat right over in that area, right over there, in case you wondered where they were at, they would tell you, you know, it's going to be okay. Someday you're going to laugh about it, so cherish each moment before they went away too fast. And you smiled and said thanks and muttered under your breath, yeah, right, they got no idea. <laughs> but now looking back on those moments, how right they really were. You see, God uses all of us to speak to one another when we need to hear the Spirit in our lives. Following Christ requires a wisdom reflected in acts of mind, body, and soul. It's a life in contrast to the lives of those who do not follow Christ. Paul writes in chapter 13, verse 14, he says, Instead, put all on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. See, when we're constantly looking to the future, we're looking for the world to satisfy us. Following Jesus reminds us that there is more. And if we continue to race to that more, we miss the beautiful creation that God has given us. Jesus tells a parable about a farmer who had a great crop. So this farmer decides he's going to build some granaries to store it up. Because after the harvest, that corn is going to be wonderful. And if he can just sit on it until corn turns $7 a bushel, he's going to make a lot of money. And so that night after he gets the corn in and it's all put in the granary, that night, the angel of the Lord comes to visit and takes his life. The disciples said to Jesus, tell us what that means. He said that many of his neighbors thought the man was being wise because he would be rich. But the reality is, we do not know when that day will come. So live every day in the joy and the love of God. It's kind of like the old joke. Purses do not hold U-Hauls. The gifts that God gives us are not material. They're relational. And that's why the writer of, of Ephesians reminds us to be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, give thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this brings us back to being Presbyterian. Did you know that historically Presbyterians were known as psalm singers? That's right, they gathered together and on their worship services they sang songs and they prayed and they sang more songs. They actually had fun. Can you believe that? Presbyterians having fun without getting a committee together to create it. Amazing, I know. But over time, the need to calm down grew too much and they had to get back some order. And so they accepted the way and all the orderly traditions that we have now. But you see... We can live in the church in the moment and make room for the Spirit while still being decent and in order. And you know why? Because it all comes from the church. You. You are the church. 
You are the ones who determines what we do in here. If you want to get up and sing and dance and shout hallelujah, go for it. If you want to sit there and look like something's not tasting good in your mouth, then do the same. We have options, friends. God gives us the ability to do these things and speaks to us with one another. It's amazing to think that right now, the Holy Spirit is alive and among us. Because when we gather to give thanks to God for our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for the hope of salvation, we're proclaiming that this time is sacred. It is set apart for celebrating God. Anxious thoughts about the future, whether they be the next hour, day, week, or years, in the future should not fill our thoughts while we're worshiping God in this time and place. But it's hard. I know. I got a list of things to do when I get home today. And I got stuff I got to do tomorrow. And on Wednesday and Thursday, I've got a meeting. And I got that thing on Friday. And boy, I sure hope dinner is good. <laughs> it gets us, doesn't it? But you see, we're called to be together in this time and place to serve one another. And we can only serve one another when we know one another. And how best to do that than talking to them. We have to learn who our neighbors are. Sometimes it's the person sitting in the pew. Sometimes it's the person that lives across the street, behind you, in the alley, or down the lane. But unless we're no longer strangers, it makes it difficult to share all that God intends us to be. So friends, may God give us the strength, courage, and wisdom to seek one another so that the Spirit may overflow to bring you faith, hope, and love. And Paul said the greatest of these is love. Amen. Our God is a generous God, so let us give and live generously in response to all that God has done for us. Let us present our tithes and our offerings to the Lord.
bend your ear to us, God of love, as we pray not only for ourselves, but for people everywhere. We pray for those who are struggling because of natural disasters, the hurricanes in the Gulf, the fires in the West, the grass fires right in our county, those who are suffering from droughts in Minnesota and the Dakotas. We pray for those who are struggling from COVID. We pray for those among us who just need a special time of care. God of mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those whose work leaves them exhausted and dissatisfied, for those struggling to pay bills and to put food on the table, for those consumed by endless tasks and daily chores, for those in need of a lighter load. God of mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for leaders, administrators, and decision makers who carry a heavy mantle and who cannot please everyone yet who still try, strive to do what is good and right. We pray our nation's leaders uphold those in need, defend the oppressed, and do not succumb to the idols of money and power. We pray for disputes to end, for people to work together, for our nation to know peace. God of mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are ill and those who care for the ill. Hear us as we silently pray for those who are on our hearts this day. Bless our doctors, nurses, and medical staff with reserves of strength and endurance. Bless the patients filling our hospitals with healing and hope. And bless those working on our behalf to curb the COVID-19 pandemic. Build among us, holy God, a sense of mutual responsibility for the health and safety of our communities, our nation, and our world. God of mercy, hear our prayers. O oh God, in your loving purpose, give us the will to be the answer to the prayers we pray. For the sake of the one who saves, Jesus Christ our Lord, united as a family of faith and as the body of Christ, we lift these prayers up to you, God our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Finally, hear us pray the prayer Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 21, verses 1 and 4.
worship today. Quick to listen, slow to speak, open to hearing and responding to God's truth, living in the moment. May God bless you and keep you. Be kind and gracious to you. And may God look upon you with favor and bring you peace. Amen.